These camps, they aren't something new. I was in one of the first, many years ago, you see. Then it was revolutionary for the few who knew some crap like that indeed existed. Sure, in the 50s you could hear about conversion therapy and such, but it was done inside a building where people were sent when others decided that they were too far gone and there was little anyone could do for them. If they could back then, fine. If they didn't, it was fine too. But those first camps were actually secrets. I believe it was because that they were experimental. Now people understand. So the better days are here. Or at least most people. You still hear the nut job here and there who believes people's sexual orientation could be changed with violence. But they are few. Back then, I didn't know what in the hell was going on until it was too late. One night, when I was 14, my dad just stormed into my room with a bag and demanded I put my clothes inside. Just enough for eight weeks, he said. I was sleepy and confused. I don't even know how I did it, but I know why I did it. Even sleepy and confused, that man terrified me. So I put a lot of clothes in the bag, then he made me change my pajamas and we both went downstairs. Two tall guys were waiting for me. You're going to a special camp, Mom said. I didn't understand, so I asked what was the meaning of all this. Don't worry, one of the two strangers said. There won't be such questions from this one in two months, once all of this is over. I wanted to say something, but I didn't. They put me inside their van and drove away. I had a million questions, of course, but I was shown a gun after I asked the first one. So there wasn't a second. They're only doing this because they love you, one of the men said. You should understand that. I didn't understand anything, but I wanted to believe that. I needed to believe that. The confusion had already been replaced by fear as you already know by now. We arrived around eight in the morning. I didn't know how long we'd been on the road, nor where I was. I could only say it was in some wooded area where there were some cabins and a little more. There were two sides as in any camp, boys and girls. We formed in lines. Talking was forbidden. We were warned. You only speak when someone in the staff speaks to you. You do as you're told, you don't complain, and you do your best for this to work. Because you're a bunch of disgusting fags, the man giving the speech said, so just be grateful we're even willing to speak to you. It was another time, and that's no excuse. I won't give you the details, but you already know what happened to us in the following weeks, and if you don't, then you're one of the lucky ones and I won't take that from you. Of course things went south as it seems to happen every time you take a sadist and give him a target deemed acceptable. One girl died. We heard the rumors. Even if speaking to the other victims was forbidden, of course we did it. And of course they knew. That's what some of us, myself included, thought it wasn't true. Just the staff trying to scare us into obedience. That was until we saw the body. A week or so after she died, we all saw it because the staff made sure we did. They took us in small groups guarded by armed men in a walk about a mile away from the camp. They threw her away on a creek. The smell could be smelled from a long distance. Her eyes and ears were gone. A good chunk of other parts, too. Most likely due to the animals. Uh, I hope so. This is what happens when you don't do as you're told, a man said. Then they made us go back, and that was all. Over the years I tried to learn more about her. I saw her alive, so I thought I could recognize a poster with her face, but... I never found her in any missing people's database. The images burned into my brain, as I suspect was the case with everyone. 
And it mostly worked. I believe most of the others were too afraid to fight back. To speak. To anything. But a few of us were horrified enough to think the unthinkable. To escape. We discussed several plans and decided for one. The one we thought was less risky. The guards made rounds during the night at scheduled times. When one came to our cabin, we jumped on him and beat him hard enough to keep him on the ground. We tied his hands and feet and put some used socks in his mouth and then left the door closed. Then we ran. We ran into the night without knowing where we were going. One of the others had an idea about where the highway could be, so we followed. But he was wrong. We never found it on our own. What we did find was a group of hunters, and they knew about the camp. They said they would help us if we gave something in exchange. Three blowjobs later, we were on their truck, escaping. I never went back home. I pimped myself out for several years, and then I managed to find a discreet job doing stuff. I don't know what happened to the others. Hopefully they did better. But you know what? I think I saw one of the guys lately. No, not one of my guys, but one of the others from the staff. He will be a senator soon, if you vote for him. So please, don't vote for that guy who seems so focused on gay rights right now. It's just a mirage. For another story, tune in next Tuesday. Meanwhile, watch another video. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Check the description for our social media. And sleep well. If you can. <laughs>